Wait, this is cute. Okay, I'm sorry. This is a, a butch and a femme. Let's be so for real right now. Like, this is the femme sitting all like nice and ladylike, and this is the butch kneeling like a mask. <laughs> Come on, bro. This is clearly a queer couple. <laughs> I found act one to be kind of weirdly paced. Like, in hindsight, it's a little bit weird that we ended the tournament and then went to the People of the Springs and then did a little bit there and then it ended. It's It was felt like it was splitting things off in a really weird place. The tournament could have been like extended more. I, I, I don't know, it feels very fluffy right now and like a little bit weird pacing, but I've heard mixed things about the second act. So I'm hoping that those people are wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like the people who didn't like it are wrong. I'm hoping. Uh, we found out Atea was like on death's door basically and she's only got a few more days left. We'll find out what's going on with that. I'm assuming she's going to die at the start of this act, but... Paimon feels like a whole new Paimon after those two days in the hot springs. The abyss kind of threw a wrench in our relaxation now. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Still, spending time here really has felt like a vacation. The Koholosaurs are so nice and so fun to play with. Their bellies are super bouncy! Oh, and Atea's snacks were so delicious! She gave Paimon some for the road just this morning, actually! What was she up to? Yelling at some kids who got caught throwing stones in the hot springs, so... <laughs> not much has changed since we first met her. Yeah. Two days ago. Hey, you guys! Sleep well last night? Yep! This area is so nice! <laughs> Glad you like it. I was thinking of taking you guys out to do some sea fishing. Later tonight, we what can these eat animations? whatever we catch. Fresh fish is absolutely delicious right off the grill. Hey, Mualani! Yeah? What do you need? The team sent out to fight in the Night Warden Wars has returned. And Kachina? Is she back as well? Kachina fell in battle. Oh, dear. But don't worry, the team was victorious, so the Rite of Resurrection will be held in the stadium soon. Yeah. That's a relief. The Abyss is cunning, and it was her first time. Mistakes are bound to happen. Exactly. She deserves to hold her head up high. Alright, thanks for letting me know. We'll head out in a bit. Jeez, she sounded a little anxious there. Had me thinking it was bad news for a moment. Mulani, you said the Abyss was cunning just now, but it seems like the Abyss just wants to destroy everything. Like, think about all those monsters that attacked your tribe. If there really was some sort of cunning plan, wouldn't it make more sense to send them to attack plan. Kachina and her small team? Um, not that Paimon wants them to be in any more danger, it's just... <laughs> Relax, I get it. The Abyss is difficult to understand, that's for sure. At a glance, it certainly seems like the only goal is total destruction. The Abyss isn't a living entity, after all, so what capacity for logic or planning could it possibly possess? It's but like the Honkai. a long history of fighting the Abyss, we've realized things aren't quite so simple. 500 years ago, the Abyss invaded Tevat. You know about that, right? During the age of Conria? That's right. Conria suffered greatly during that time. But so did every other nation in Tevat. And Natlan was the worst affected of all. It took the combined efforts of the then Pyro Archon and heroes from every tribe to finally repel the Abyss. Even so, the effects of the invasion lingered for hundreds of years, only able to be reversed little by little. Our tribe's waters were contaminated. The children of Echo's territory was overrun by dangerous sludge surging from underground. Unrelenting black winds tore across the lands of the Flower Feather Clan. It was like each disaster was designed for a specific tribe. Interesting. So the Abyss understood the foundation of each tribe? Exactly. We once thought that the Abyss's desire for destruction was a sort of primal instinct. But its methods are, in truth, marked by intelligence. 
We now believe the Abyss has invaded the Night Kingdom, and has the capacity to read the memories of this land at any given moment. And that's how it became so dangerous and cunning. Almost like it knows you inside and out. Yes, and that's why we've been unable to fully eradicate it, even after all this time. Luckily, the problems left behind by the Abyss have been successfully addressed by the various Pyro Archons we've had over the years. Now every tribe is prospering and things are looking up. I mean, just look at what we managed to do a few days ago. We totally fought them off. In other nations, I've seen how much effort it takes to truly eradicate the Abyss. The people of Natland live in its shadow every day. Who knows how long it will take for this war to end. You must have had to sacrifice a lot to get to this point. Every battle, every sacrifice is in pursuit of a future where we get to stop fighting. Responsibility, duty, unavoidable burden. Everyone in Natland views the war differently. But I believe we will be rid of the Abyss one day. And the efforts of all who fought against them will become a story for the ages. To think that my name could survive in ballads passed down to future generations, it's kind of romantic. Everyone has something that drives them forward, you know? You can do it. We have to. Not only for ourselves, but for our future. Anyway, let's head to the stadium. Our fishing trip can wait until Kachina's back with us. The sea's not going anywhere. What if it is, though? <laughs> Blackstone under a white stone. Cutscene? Whoa. Of course. No one's gonna miss out on the chance to welcome our heroes back from battle. <laughs> it's their moment of glory. Kachina's gonna be so flustered. She's never had this many eyes on her before. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't seem like the kind of person who likes being the center of attention. Looks like I'm just in time. Yeah, a commission ran longer than expected, but I made it. I heard about the incident with your tribe, Mualani. Is everyone all right? Yeah, it's all taken care of. Our new friend here has got some tricks up her sleeve, by the way. She's just <laughs> as strong as Machina made her out to be. I could have done better. Hey, look! Is it about to start? Oh, we did. That's oh. right. Oops. Someone will come out and recite a eulogy, and then we'll sing the Ode of Resurrection together. Come on, let's find a spot with a good view. When the singing starts, just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Let's go somewhere higher up so Kachina can spot us. I'm good. Hello. Warriors of Netland, heed the call of life. We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Netland's fire. The lifeblood of our nation. Oh shit. Let's go in sicko mode. Sounds good, Camo. Sail continues on. Glory passed through generations. Hey Stella, I love you. Courage ignites the sky and earth. Once more, victory heralds Natland's path. We'll wait for you, we'll sing for you. Come back, brothers. Come back, heroes. Once again, once again, burn bright.
something going to go wrong? The singing is really good, yeah. <laughs> I could not find Kachina within the Night Kingdom or locate her ancient name. What? Oh. Uh, what does that even mean? Usually once the Ode is complete, the Pyro Archon and Resurrected Person will emerge from the flames. But something went wrong. Are we gonna- What's going on? Go in to like- This has never happened before. To like try and rescue her? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Clearly the team sent to fight the Abyss didn't win after all. Think about it. The Ode rekindles all victors. We witnessed it countless times. Since the Archon couldn't find Kachina in the Night Kingdom, that must mean there's more to this victory than meets the eye. <laughs> Look at this guy heckling. You just haven't gotten over the fact that Kachina beat you in the pilgrimage! Pathetic. The both of you. Your wild guesses are misplaced. We completed our mission. Maybe you Ooh, did. She's got clicks on but her essence. say whether that little girl even contributed at all? Maybe she got scared and ran off. Why would the Wyab recognize someone like her? Even if she was on the winning team. How dare you insult a hero of Natland like that? Kachina sacrificed herself to repel the Abyss. She doesn't deserve to be subjected to your vile rumors when she's not even here to defend herself. Calm down, Mulani. There's no point arguing with the likes of them. I can't just sit here and let them slander her like that. To insult a hero of Natland, the person actually has to be a hero. You... You think about it, everyone. Yeah, who we can murder them. Really I think. Fault here. A girl who never should have even gone to war? Or the great Pyro Archon? Why would the rules of our nation suddenly stop? You're gonna insult the Pyro Archon to her face? Is that really wise? It's true. If she wasn't revived, it must mean she failed to achieve victory. Maybe the Wyab interpret victory in different ways? I mean. That girl didn't look all that strong to me. She beat all these people! <laughs> Pyro Archon seems to be deep in thought. Why isn't she putting a stop to the commotion? Kachina wouldn't have run! That's not like her at all! No, she's been waiting for this moment for too long. No matter how daunting the situation, no matter how scared she might feel, she's always the first person to stand up and face it head on. We don't even know what happened. So don't you dare try to use this as an excuse to vent your anger or slander her reputation. Fine. We'll find out what happens soon. Why is he like that? <laughs> then we'll see who truly deserves glory. That's enough. There is no doubt about today's victory or Kachina's part in it. She is a hero worthy yeah. of our admiration and celebration. However... The failure of today's ceremony is undeniable. Kachina has not been rekindled, and I offer you all my deepest apologies as I continue to investigate this matter. To prevent further casualties, I have decided to suspend the pilgrimage until this matter is resolved. What? No one is all-knowing. No one is infallible, not even myself. I mean, she's only human, but so like, yeah. But doubt means by which we seek the truth. Not a weapon we wield against others. I, 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 I didn't Smite mean Smite him that down, kill him, do it. I just... If there are things you wish to clarify, then ask me directly. Doubt my answer if you wish. But now's your chance. You have concerns? State them. No, of, of course not. Even though I have said nothing to change your mind, then it would seem the truth never mattered to you at all. That guy doesn't even have the courage to answer the Pyro Archon's questions. <laughs> so much for all that glory talk earlier. I have a question, Archon. My friend Kachina. I know, I right? get fucked. Do you have any idea where she is? It's extremely important to me. I know you said you were investigating the situation, but I'm sorry, that's not enough. Oh shit. I've already shared everything I know. If you want to learn the truth and rescue your friends sooner, you should join the investigation. So, what do you say? Yeah, I knew of it. Of course I'll join. 
In that case, come see me in the speaker's chamber. We should join them. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, could you drop by as well, Traveler? I'd like to have a chat. Perfect. <laughs> Already Rest achieved our goal for this nation. <laughs> tribal chiefs informed on the progress of the investigation. Once again, I apologize for the outcome of this ceremony. If there are no further questions, let's part for now. Um, did she just ask us to come along? Yeah, end of our did. quest. GG's. Let's go. I'd like to know what's going on myself. He's just invited himself. <laughs> the situation is urgent, so I'll get straight to the point. Kachina is undoubtedly a hero of Natlan, and I'm deeply sorry this happened to her. I didn't realize Ianson had long hair. The That's Kingdom, weird. But I don't know what's causing it. As a result, I've been unable to track down her location. It does feel weird, like, seeing her in game, Until though. we find and address the cause of the unrest, the Ode of Resurrection will continue to be ineffective. And that means Kachina won't be able to come back? That's correct. Not until the problem with the Night Kingdom is resolved. How long will that take? It's hard to say. Kachina always dreamed of fighting the Abyss. Of doing her part to defend Natlan. She wasn't afraid of death because she knew, if it came down to it, the Pyro Archon would be there to bring her back to life. Damn, Whenever we sat rub it down in. together, exhausted from training, she would always hum the Ode of Resurrection. Aww. She was supposed to come back to us. We were supposed to hug her and celebrate with her and share her joy. We supported her every step of the way, but what are we supposed to do now? Sit peacefully and wait for her return? Lose ourselves in grief over her death? Tell me, are we her friends or her murderers? Oh, That's shit. That's not fair, Ulani. Yeah, that is a little bit out of line. It's all right. I understand your rage and your grief. Kachina's life means a great deal to me, Mualani. Believe me, I want to bring her back as soon as possible. I would give you that peace of mind if I could. But please, hear what I have to say so I can at least give you a broader picture of the issue we are now facing. Considering the recent attack on your tribe, I believe the Abyss has found a new means of undermining the rules of our nation. You mean... The Sacred Flame. The foundation of our resistance against the Abyss. If we continue to hold the pilgrimage and send teams to fight the Abyss, there will likely be more casualties. But if we stop altogether, the Sacred Flame will only grow weaker. The Abyss will scale up their attacks, and the tragedy we saw with the people of the Springs will only be the first of many. If we compare the two choices, the former seems to be the lesser of two evils. <sighs> Sorry, I know that may sound harsh, but I bear the name Malipo. Weighing the costs is my Empire. duty. The raw truth can be cruel, but we need to understand it if we want to approach this rationally. But what would you say, Mualani? This is personal for you. And unlike Kanich, I dare say it's not a simple case of weighing up which course of action is less painful, is it? No. I can't choose between them, and I don't want to. Saying that one is preferable over the other is disrespectful to the people who suffered. Hmm. You're saying it doesn't matter whether I suspend the pilgrimage. The consequences will be equally painful. Yes. What happened to Kachina breaks my heart. But I couldn't bring myself to sacrifice other people for her sake. And that is the crux of the problem. It's not simply a matter of choosing the lesser of two evils. Either way, there will be people who suffer. And the end result will be the same. Belief in the pilgrimage will waver. Once doubt has crept in, the people will no longer unite in battle against the Abyss. And that is exactly what the Abyss wants. 
Their mm. ultimate goal isn't to break the rules but... that make the Ode of Resurrection work. It's to destroy the people's faith in them. Mm. To prevent what happened to Kachina from happening to anyone else, we need to suspend the pilgrimage. So that is my current plan. And in the meantime, I've made efforts to strengthen each tribe's defenses. Then, we have to find another way of strengthening the sacred flame to keep the abyss at bay. This won't be easy. I'll need time to figure out the best approach. I understand your anger, Mualani. But I hope that provided some clarity, at least. Wow. Hyman thought things were gonna get heated for a second, but the Pyro Archon took the time to explain everything so patiently. I owe you an apology, Archon. I let myself get carried away earlier, and I'm sorry. You're right. We need to focus on finding solutions. We could always hold the pilgrimage without sending a team to fight in the Night Warden Wars. That way, we would still be able to fuel the Sacred Flame. I've considered that, but the two events have nearly always been linked. Mm. Without the chance to fight the Abyss, pilgrimage rankings lose their prestige, yeah. and competitor numbers will drop. Need to offer something else. participants, the amount of contending fire produced will decrease. And the vicious cycle will continue indefinitely. So essentially, the abyss is taking Kachina hostage. Yeah. What happens if you stay in the Night Kingdom for a long period of time? You've learned about the concept of ley lines during your travels, yes? Okay. The Night Kingdom is something similar. Staying there for a short period of time shouldn't have an effect on the person. But with the abyss in the picture, it's a different story. Your sense of self will be devoured until eventually you become one with the sea of souls. It's like, it's a sea of quantum. Imagine pouring a cup of water way down. into a rushing river. You can try to scoop up another cup, but there's no chance it will be the same water ah, you had before. Interesting analogy. I won't sugarcoat it. That is the danger Kachina is currently facing. Just like you said, Archon, both of these problems need to be addressed. It also makes me think of um, the Primordial Sea and how like Renee became part of it and sort of like lost himself and kind of got split into multiple different parts because everything was just kind of like gloop, you know? You can focus all your efforts on dealing with the Sacred Flame. I will go search for Kachina. The Abyss poses the same threat to you as it does to her. It is very possible you will not return. Knowing that, do you still choose to go? Kachina's waiting for us to rescue her. That's all that matters. I failed to protect her during our campaign. But I can make it up to her now. I choose to go as well. Um, Traveler? What do you think? This isn't how it should end for her. Understood. Then I'll support you in any way I can. Let's go. The masters of the night wind have a technique that can extract an ancient name from the ley lines. If we can find Kachina's ancient name, I can use the link between them to pinpoint her position within the Night Kingdom. Then comes the hard part. You need to visit the Night Kingdom in person and rescue her. But isn't the Night Kingdom a land of souls? Can we even go there? I mean, we have souls, Under we're not ginger. Under normal circumstances, only the consciousness can enter. But there is a way to go there in person. However, know that the Night Kingdom will attempt to repel you, and the Abyss certainly won't leave you be. <laughs> it's fine by me. Same here. Fighting the Abyss is nothing new for me. There's something about Chaska's design that is throwing me off, and I don't genuinely don't know what it is. There's something that doesn't look right to me. It won't be a problem. So, uh, Hyman's the only one who's scared? Well, if you're going, Traveler, Hyman's going too. <laughs> Sit Lolly of the Masters of the Night Wind once Sit created Lally. an artifact that can be used to communicate with the Wyab. We call it the Spirit Speaker Stone. It was originally used as a ceremonial artifact wielded by the tribal chiefs. But that spiritual quality also means it can be used to search for an ancient name. 
That was the artifact I delivered to the Scions of the Canopy a few days ago. Didn't think I'd be hearing about it again so soon. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Your thanks are unnecessary. I will offer you whatever aid I can, but your fellowship and courage are what will truly decide the success of this operation. <laughs> Besides, you're the ones helping me. I can only focus on one thing at a time, after all. Uh, traveler, I certainly didn't expect our first conversation to be so serious. I've heard all about your accomplishments. Ever since you arrived, I've been hoping to meet you and offer you Natlin's highest level of hospitality. Yeah. Um, why? Can I have ice cream? <laughs> why? Is that not what happened in the other nations you visited? Um, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, things were pretty complicated at the start. And, you know, in the middle. But our reputation's solid nowadays. So first of all, in Mondstadt, they were suspicious of us because we were just a random outlander who suddenly could, like, fight a dragon. Um, in Liyue, we got accused of um, killing Rex Lapis um, and had to escape with the help of the Fatui. In Inazuma, um, we had to smuggle ourselves into the country and then we gained the ire of the Raiden Shogun and had to escape again. Um, in Sumeru, um, we came up against the Academia who wanted to keep their uh, thing hush-hush and we had to like work around that and take them down. In Fontaine, we got accused of committing a crime as soon as we entered the country. <laughs> And then we had to act as an attorney for our friend. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. After all, I've heard you're someone who transcends fate. Oh, I wonder if she knows we're a descender. She must do if she's saying that. We have not had an easy ride, though. <laughs> you know quite a lot about me. Perhaps even more than you can imagine. But we can talk about that some other time. I do Interesting. This would what does she mean by that? Night for a drink and some musical ambiance. But there are important things to be done. Oh, I almost forgot. Atea was wounded in the fight against the Abyss. She wanted us to give this to you. It embodies fond memories and my strength of will. That's what she asked us to tell you. She said you'd know what that means. <sighs> I didn't think this day would come so soon. The flames of her life force. I can feel them flowing within the talisman. <laughs> if things were different, the two of us could have enjoyed the hot springs together while she gave this to mm. me in person. We're supposed to be hot spring buddies after all. Which tribe is she from? Is but she from the people of the don't Springs? Worry. This talisman means a great deal to me. I'll take good care of it. And once this is all over. <laughs> so true, okay. I'll pay Atea a visit. You said you didn't want to jeopardize the production of contending fire. But that's not at all why you decided to suspend the pilgrimage, is it? You're right. Even now. The production of contending fire is far from sufficient. Oh, shit. The gradual corrosion caused by the abyss has resulted in a massive shortage of pyro energy. And we're currently at the breaking point. As things stand, the pilgrimage is a lost cause. Suspending it allows us to save our strength to defend the tribes. So what she says about resulted the gradual corrosion caused by the abyss has resulted in a massive shortage of pyro energy. Atea has a pyrovision. So I wonder if that's why she specifically is being taken over by the corrosion like faster than expected. Because she has a pyrovision. Because normally NPCs, even significant NPCs, don't have visions. So the fact that she had a vision and it was like ob obviously there and it was pyro. Hmm. 
The Abyss has brought catastrophe to Natlan, and Kachina's disappearance in the Night Kingdom is a direct consequence of that. We can't let the general public know that. No. If the public learned that Natlan's destruction was close at hand, there would be immense panic. But if I said nothing at all, they would have continued to question the integrity of Natlan's heroes. Hmm. Another simple choice. The latter was clearly the better solution. But you chose otherwise. I have never subscribed to the belief that the right choice is the one with the fewest sacrifices. Interesting. Let's go. There's still a way for the Sacred Flame to last a little longer. You mean... Yes. Come with me. Interesting. I have never subscribed to the belief that the right choice is the one with the fewer casualties. Hmm. The Sacred Flame must never go out. Not only does it strike fear in the Abyss, but it's also the pillar of Natlan's stability. So until our heroes are ready, I will sacrifice my power to keep it burning. But that can only last so long. I think we should focus on the remaining ancient name bearers. Don't let desperation cloud your judgment. Those chosen by the Wyab have already embarked on their destined path. It is for them to decide how that journey ends, not us. All we can do is support them. Even so, for you to make this sacrifice, it's not right. <laughs> if not me, then who? No other is capable of sustaining the sacred flame. I possess great strength, but I'm not above my people. This is part of my duty. Archon, it's the Fatui! What? Oh shit, okay. The Archon of Natlan. A force to be reckoned with. The secret of the Ley Lines is no secret to me. Long have they been destined for ruin. Oh! And since the oath made five centuries ago remains unfulfilled, what use is the Gnosis in your hands? I don't know what you mean. But it sounds like this is about more than the Tsaritsa. In times of crisis, someone must pick up the mantle of salvation. Your plan has reached an impasse, and now it falls to me to create new rules for Natlan. Oh, he wants to be the Archon? But before the dawn of a new Maybe? age, the old must be destroyed. I assume that's the end of your speech? Good. People like us? Let our plates do the talking! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god, this is so cool! <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh, the hand. <laughs> oh, plus, come off. I love how she's just using Kanichi's weapon for this. <laughs> oh my fucking god. I hope there aren't that many people left in the, in the stadium. <laughs> This is incredible, holy shit. Whoa! That was just fucking flying! Are the people in the city even gonna be 
Okay. <laughs> Of the We're night wind. Send word. The captain and his followers must be apprehended. Holy shit. <laughs> that was incredible. Are you alright, Archon? He was a formidable opponent. Exactly what I would expect from the first of the Fatui Harbingers. <laughs> I never imagined someone could match you in combat. If the Saritza that was him here, truly incredible, yeah. Why would he bring up what happened five centuries ago? Yeah. And how much does he know about Natland? He must be from Natland, surely. The Harbingers are all driven by their own personal goals. The only purpose that unites them is collecting the Gnosis. But I'm sure the captain has his own reasons for being here as well. Whatever his motive, we should shift our focus to the Fatui. If they attack again, and we're not prepared, we're done for. No, we're running out of time. The wound I inflicted should hold him back and weaken him for the time being. Besides, I'm sure you noticed. The power that came to his rescue just now came from the masters of the Nightwind. In other words, there are traitors among us. Not necessarily. Sus. This could prove to be a very valuable turn of events. When we exchanged final blows, I sensed an unusual presence within him. I'll need to investigate further. Kanich, go to the Masters of the Nightwind and look into who could have aided the captain. Speak to Seat Lali. She should know. Of course. I'll head out it right now. Giant cock. Do you still intend to <laughs> Yes. But fear not. <sighs> Fucking holy shit. I was not prepared that for that cutscene has never rested solely in its archon whoa together we foresaw the only path that leads to our nation's future we must trust in that vision now Is everything okay, Archon? Ah, uh, completely fine. Just lamenting the fact that I never got a picture when I could still turn my hair into print. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, too late now. <laughs> I just hope the others have a safe journey. Bro, this quest is wild. Just a small explosion, don't worry about it. What's so happened at the stadium? Yeah. Did something explode? It feels like the Archon unleashed her power. She must be fighting a formidable opponent. Should we go back and check what's going on? Kachina doesn't have that much time. Have faith in the Archon. She wouldn't lose in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Once we find Kachina's ancient name, we'll head right back. Okay. Let's just keep climbing. Simon really hopes nothing goes wrong. Chaska's butt is insane. <laughs> As power cream. Like the fucking shine on it to make it look extra like bubble butt is insane. Sorry. That's Wyna, the tribal chief. Let's head over to him. Chaska. Why is he white? Why? Why is he fucking white? They've been doing decently with the skin colors of the the NPCs, but come on, bro. <laughs> nice to see you again, Wyna. I'm afraid on, we bro. don't have time for pleasantries, so I'll get right to it. Oh, the, the we're here for the spirits. Correctly on the S. Whoa, hold on a second. 
At least tell me why you need it first. Like clearly this My is voiced by a black man too. Trapped within the Night Kingdom. We need the stone to find her ancient name and rescue her. Rescue her? From the Night Kingdom? That's right. I'm sorry, but someone needs to tell you what you don't want to hear. Going there, a mature warrior would never make such a Damn. foolish decision. The nature of battle is unpredictable. You never know how it's going to end. Losing a friend is tragic, but when that happens, the best thing you can do is focus on how to prevent further casualties. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Chief Wina. But if the price of maturity is abandoning a friend in need, I'll choose foolishness any day. If Kachina's still holding on, then so will I. I thought you might say that. <sighs> Is something wrong, Wyna? This doesn't seem like you. Life isn't complete without taking risks. That's always been your mantra. <laughs> I love her glittery eyeshadow. It's nothing. That is a white man from the, the mountains Kingdom of Caucasus. The Night is a dangerous place. Can't blame me for checking if you were up to the task. If you're that determined, far be it from me to stop you. Here's the stone. Keep it safe, okay? It's not like we have a spare. <laughs> Thank you. Her eyeshadow is so cool. Ah, seems like you two go way back. But aren't you from the Flower Feather Clan, Chaska? Oh, Chaska's a peacekeeper. So she's famous throughout the tribes. She's always the one people call to resolve conflicts. So we slowly got to know each other that way. Her younger know, sister, Quichi's always hanging around our tribe, too. She's helped us out a lot in the past. Oh, you have a younger sister? Yes. I'll introduce you to her sometime. But let's get back to business. Wayna, how do we use the stone? I think I just hate her hat. I think that's what it is. Your intended destination is completely different from the real world. The Night Kingdom is like a river flowing with concepts. And the ancient name you seek is like a tiny fish swimming downstream. In that sense, the stone is like a fishing boat drifting down the river, but the boat alone isn't enough. You need a fisherman experienced enough to steer it in the right direction. We couldn't do that ourselves? With a little practice, I'm sure you could. You have the strength and the talent. If you want to make sure this works, though, I could recommend someone to you. Who? Bichama. A legendary warrior and scout from our tribe. He's got a keen eye and a well-honed intuition. Even his ancient name means to seek. If you're fishing for a name, you're gonna want him on the boat. Vichama? Why does that name sound familiar? I don't know. Why does it find sound familiar? He's one of Auntie Atea's hot spring buddies. Mm -hmm. I've heard stories about him. Where can we find him? Ever since Malco passed, he spends most of his time gazing out at the scenery from the clifftops. Follow the path that way, and I'm sure you'll find him. Thank you. We'll go look for him there. <sighs> Good luck. I hope everything goes well. Oh, looks like we've got a surprise visitor here. Impressive, yeah? Indeed, but it's now time for you to leave. This is where we keep our watch. It's not a great spot for sightseeing or small talk. Also, this is a perfect place for sightseeing. What do you mean? You can see so much from here. If only I could make friends with the riders of the flower, flower feather clan or their fluffy kookasaurs. If you want it, then work for it. <laughs> That's true. But as we all know, most members of the flower feather clan enjoy flying in the sky on their kookasaurs friends. It's hard enough to see one on the ground, much less set up a meeting. Mm, but now that I think about it, both the Scions of the Canopy and the Flower Feather Clan like high places and have a pretty good relationship with one another. Which means I shouldn't give up just yet. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that I'm not afraid of heights. Next time I'll try my luck with a hot air balloon and go even further up. Heading for the high ground. Oh ho, well said. To continually challenge yourself is also a way to compete with your past self. She turns into Digimon? Yeah. <laughs> from the cliff tops. Ah, that must be him! Hello there, are 
Are you Vichama? That's me. Did you need something? You tell him about Kachina and the spirit speaker stone. What? You're saying you can bring someone back from the Night Kingdom? How is that even possible? No, if you really think about it, anything's possible in that kind of place. But that would mean... Are you okay? You don't look so good. Mm hmm. I like Everything's his fine. I'll help you, but I do have a small request. After I help you find Kachina's ancient name, I want to use the stone to look for my friends as well. Your friend? Oh, why not mention someone named Malko? Is that who you're talking about? Yes, but I'd rather not get into it if it's all the same to you. That's not a problem. We agree to your request. Yeah. Since you're helping us find Kachina's ancient name, it's only right that we return the favor. Then we're agreed. Can I have a look at the stone? Here you go. Huh. I see. From what I can tell, it functions almost like an abyssal pylon. Both connect the Night Kingdom to the living world. Mm. Once the connection is established, the abyss will come surging through the opening like a predator honing in on the scent of blood. So we have to be sure not to use it in a tribal settlement. Yeah, that seems like it would be bad. Wow, you got all that just from looking at it? I mean, knows was a ship. I just picked up on the basics, really. I still have no idea why it works. You said someone named Seat Lolly invented this. They must be a genius. I'll go find an open area and start setting things up. In the meantime, I need you to get two things for me. We'll go right away. What do you need? First, I'll need some hook ropes. Pretty much every store around here carries them, so no need to go anywhere special. Oh, and I need to build a net out of them, so make sure you get a good amount. Wait, are you saying you're going to use a real net to catch Kachina's ancient name? How does that work when one's tangible and one's not? By creating something tangible in our world, like a net, we can create a connection to a corresponding concept in the Night Kingdom. Basically, I'm going to use the concept of a net to catch something equally intangible, an ancient name. Oh, I see. What about the second thing you needed? Right. I need one... no, two chunks of obsidian. Once we bring the ancient names into our world, we'll need a place to store them. Normally, you can only get obsidian from the Children of Echoes, but I heard there's a traveling merchant from that tribe around here somewhere, so maybe you can try your luck there. Gotcha! Okay. All right, let's split up. See that clearing? Let's meet over there when you're done. Oh, and you can send someone with me if you want. In case you're worried, I might take the stone for myself. Mm, what do you think, Chaska? <laughs> There's no need. Lena spoke highly of you. That means you're trustworthy. I appreciate it. Even though that doesn't mean much to me anymore. Damn. Anyway, it'll take some time to set everything up, so no need to rush. I'll see you in a bit. What an odd guy. He seems so defeated, but also really invested in the stone at the same time. I don't have any more insight than you, Paimon. Let's just focus on the preparations for now. Hang on, Kachina. We're coming for you. Hello. Do you have any hook ropes for sale? Hook ropes? As in rock climbing equipment? Yes. How much for your whole stock? Oh, I don't want to cook. Oh, the whole thing? Oh, let me see. That would be 30,000 mora in total. Deal? Deal. Damn. Wait. Really? What, you want me to drive down the price? We just need these as fast as possible. Thanks. Oh, uh, no problem at all. I'll even pass along some information on the house. These ropes are usually used by rock climbing enthusiasts. 
Uh, if you want to learn, Roka's the person you want to ask. All right. That's everything. Here you go. Now we need the obsidian. Let's go talk to the traveling merchant Bichama mentioned. Excuse me. Do you sell obsidian? Why, yes. <laughs> I've got a chunk for sale right over there. Perfect. Is that the only one, though? We actually need two. Hmm. That might be tough. Uh, tell you what. I'll take a look through these boxes over here, and, and we'll see what we can find. Thank you so much. We'll wait here. <sighs> Relax. Everything's going according to plan. I know, it's just... I could tell Vichama feels the same way about his friend that I do about Kachina. I hope this chunk of obsidian isn't the only one. Kachina always carries all sorts of shiny stones with her. If I was the one trapped in the Night Kingdom, she'd have a whole pile of obsidian ready in a heartbeat. Well, would you look at that? I did bring an extra. <laughs> Here you go, young lady. How does it look? I love his voice. Perfect! Thank you. How much do I owe you? If you hadn't shown up, these stones would have just sat here collecting dust. I'll take 3,000 more of for both. Here you go. By the way, I heard you mention Bichama just now. You run in an errand for him then? How's he doing? Melko's been gone for five years now. It's about time he started to move forward. Do well. you know what happened between them? I heard about it in passing while I was out drinking one night. But I don't know all the details. Michama and like how he's just spilling the tea. Together, and even made a name for themselves together. Melko was an amazing fighter. Capable of knocking out multiple opponents in a single hit. While Vichama excelled at scouting and analyzing the battlefield. The two made an excellent team and managed to beat back the Abyss Please several with times. Lani and Kachina. Five years ago, they both emerged triumphant in the pilgrimage and were placed on the same team to fight the Abyss. But on the eve of battle, the Abyss launched an attack on their tribe and Bichama suffered an injury to his leg while attempting to rescue someone. Then what happened? The team agreed that he couldn't fight the Abyss in his condition. Bichama didn't argue. He knew going to the front lines with an injured leg would make him a burden in battle. So they raised the issue with the Pyro Archon, and she agreed to let him stay behind. It's just... Melko and the others yeah. ended up facing hordes of abyssal the guy monsters feels guilty. and numbers that far exceeded anyone's expectations. The team made an error in judgment, and they fell to the onslaught. It's Muolani. Vichama went into a deep depression after that. He blames himself for everything. It was an impossible situation. Oh, you're not wrong. But it's possible he chooses to blame himself. Not because he did something wrong, but because he wasn't able to do anything at all. I yeah. tried convincing him to move forward, to stop uh, <laughs> I blame him too. <laughs> the past. But the shadow of Melko's death hangs over him still. The abyss has caused so much suffering, and some wounds never heal. I wish there was something he could do to make himself feel better. But, uh, anyway, that's the gist of it. Maybe you could help him talk things through sometime. I would really appreciate it. I hope Vichama can move past this whole thing soon. Did you get everything? Yep, it's all here. When do we start? I've made all the necessary adjustments, so we're good to go. As agreed, I'll help you find Kachina's ancient name, and then you return the favor. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Are you seeking your friend's ancient name for the same reason as us? Uh, yes. After Malko fell, I scoured the battlefield to see what happened. It turned out 
he wasn't bested by some impossibly powerful foe. He was dragged to his grave by the sheer number of enemies. Okay. If I had been there, I would have been able to sense the danger. I could have warned them not to advance. Survivor's I've guilt. Blamed myself for what happened. But when you told me about Kachina, I realized there's a chance Malco might also be alive, fighting for survival in the Night Kingdom. He like, that with the happened guns. several years ago, right? The Pyro Archon said all life within the Night Kingdom eventually becomes one with the Sea of Souls. There might not be much hope, but I still have to try. Malco and I promised each other, even if we never managed to root out the Abyss for good, we would fight together until the end. All right, let's get to it. I'll start searching for the conceptualized version of Kachina's <laughs> okay. ancient name. If you see any fragments scattered around the area, please collect them. Make sure you prepare yourselves for battle. As I said, the stone will link the mortal realm to the Night Kingdom. The Abyss will likely emerge in response. Um, well, I have my friendship team out. Look at that golden this thing. Helps. It must be one of those fragments Gichama mentioned. Let's get closer. Oh, fuck. Gotta be faster. Whoa, monsters incoming! Watch out, everyone! Oh, hi. Watch out! Attack! That's it. Watch out! I hear everything. Toot Nari. So true. Yeehaw, Tanari. <laughs> Oh. Overruled. Coming at ya. A proper send down from this. I don't really have the greatest counter for this. Yeah. Right here. Get Wow, that was a fucking 22k normal attack. How much longer, Bichama? Not long. We're getting close. Ayo. That's what she said. Cannot exist in the real life long. Make sure you pick them up as soon as possible. Okay, shit. Wait, I tried to pick it up. It didn't work. Fuck. I found Kachina's ancient name. Hang in there, Malco. Just a little longer. Something's not right. The power of the abyss is getting stronger. The abyss is corroding his body. Vichama, you can't keep going. You'll die. I should have died five years ago. I just need a little more time. Please, I'm almost there. Oh, I'll help buy you some time. Thank you. Oh! I wonder what well, happens if you out. let him die. The power of the abyss is strong. Kinda wanna know what happens if you let him die. This power. Hanging in there? I can't hold them back much longer. Malco. No, why can't I find him? 
Why? We can't wait any longer. Pull him away from the stone, Muolani. I already tried, but the power of the abyss has him in a chokehold. It's like he's tied to the stone with an invisible rope. In that case, we have no choice. I'm sorry, Seat Molly. Get back! Oh, she's gonna destroy it? Oh Ch shit! Wait! Oh fuck. Ouch! What happened just now? It looked like the spirit speaker stone was. The stone's power was spiraling out of control. The only way to stop it was to destroy it. You were all caught in the shockwave of the explosion. You might feel dizzy for a while, but that's normal. Give us you have prior experience with this? <laughs> You're lucky we managed to dodge it in time. I thought I said to get back. <laughs> yeah, barely a second before you made it go poof. Not everyone has your reflexes, Chaska. We were this close to getting dragged into the explosion. Okay, I'll be more careful next time. At least Kachina's ancient name is still in one piece. Wait, where's Vichama? He dead, bro. Vichama! Oh. He's not dead. He's just Vichama! devastated. I couldn't find Nako's ancient name. It must be completely gone by now. Once your ancient name disappears, there's no coming back. From the very beginning, I knew there was a slim chance, but still. Mm. And now... <sighs> It's too late to save him. From the minute he left that day, it was already too late. Pichama. I'm sure he's heard enough condolences over the years. Let's just give him some space. Huh? What's that in your hands, Vichama? It looks like something's glowing. Huh? This is... Hey, Malco. Got any strength left? Not enough to swing a sword, but to say a few last words. Sure. <laughs> Too bad. No one will get to hear them. I never thought I'd actually die on this mission. <laughs> Not that I'm afraid to die. It's just... Hard thinking about my mom's face when she hears the news. Mm. Guess I have something to be thankful for then. My parents died a long time ago. They won't have to mourn me. But your gay lover will. <sighs> Pisak. <sighs> Always had to beat me at everything, didn't you? Right to the end, you were never one for goodbyes. So he just dies Maybe sitting up. Right. Maybe no one will get to hear our last words. But just in case, Vichama, I'm so glad you didn't come with us. Don't be sad. Just keep on living for the both of us. <sighs> what was that? A memory? That's so gay. Thank you, Seems like we were able to salvage something after all. Feeling any better, Vichama? Of course. Seeing him, hearing his voice again, it makes me unbelievably happy. But. It also brings with it an even deeper pain. A deeper pain? Why? Malco was always the type to put on a brave face. But in that memory just now, his hands were shaking. And his smile was forced. Aww. Really? For all these years, I regretted not being able to fight alongside him to the end. And now I know... At the end of his life, he was thinking the same thing. Bichama. I'm fine. 
Actually, I heard Chief Wyna wasn't really on board with your plan to go to the Night Kingdom. When you asked for my help, I hesitated too. I knew helping you find your friend's ancient name meant leading you one step closer to danger. But I also understood why you had to try. Everyone has regrets in life, but not everyone gets the chance to make up for them. Once allowed to fester, guilt strips us of our most valuable qualities as warriors. In that sense, we might as well choose the braver path from the very beginning. A more courageous way? If I could do it all over again, I would have followed Malco to the front lines no matter what. Even with an injured leg, there were still things I could have done. That way, even if the outcome stayed the same, I still would have fought alongside him to the end. There are critical junctures in life. And if you don't seize the chance to act, there's no going back. That's something I had to learn in hindsight. But you're still at the crossroads of your journey, so... <sighs> I hope you can walk away without regrets. Thank you, Vichama. I feel even more determined now. Kachina will come back to us. I'll make sure of it. I promised I would find her, and I intend to keep that promise. That's good to hear. <coughs> Strange. <clears throat> My body, it's... Once abyssal corrosion enters the body, a portion will fuse itself to your internal organs. Even though the Traveler possesses powers of purification, the corrosion can never be fully eradicated. Thanks to her, though, you are only briefly exposed. Slowing your breathing and controlling your emotions should help you keep the symptoms in check. Are we even look at the ether anymore at this point? Kind of. Huh. That does make me feel better. You seem very knowledgeable about all this. Just speaking from experience, that's all. Anyway, we've recovered Kachina's ancient name. She so also we're off to a great start. Corroded. Let's get Vichama back to his tribe and tell Wine of the good news. <laughs> oh, um, and apologize for destroying the spirit speaker stone. We had no choice, though, so he'll probably understand. Mm, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just blame Chaska. <sighs> She's cute. Koichi, are you really gonna just stand there like that? I don't know what you want from me. I think you know exactly what I'm trying to say, Uncle Wina. I can hear it in your voice. Honestly, it's just one thing after another with you two. Huh. They're back. Kuichi? What are you doing here? <laughs> Don't play dumb with your own sister. You know exactly why I'm here. She has such a cool design. I, I love her. I don't... I think she's still an NPC model. My apologies, everyone. I just need to borrow Tasca for a few minutes. You come with me. <laughs> I'll be just a moment. <laughs> Who is that? Her sister. Kuichi. Chaska's younger sister. Although the two aren't actually related by blood, it's kind of a long story. It feels like there's more to the story. It's not really my story to tell, but I guess it's not a secret. You see... Chaska was actually raised by cuckoo sores. She was afflicted huh? with a rare disease when she was a child and abandoned in the wild as a result. The abyss found her out there, all on her own, and tried to devour her. But in the end, all that did was trigger her will to live. That reminds me of Hershey's that and strength Honkai. of will pushed her to survive. But it also planted a seed of conflict within her. Eventually, she was adopted by the cuckoo sores. Wherever they went, she followed, getting into fights right and left. For some yeah, reason, too, Hanan can huh? totally imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Chaska finally returned to human society, it was Kuichi's parents who adopted her. At the time, Chaska still had a habit of getting into fights, so Kuichi was always taking her around, apologizing to everyone. Ah, <laughs> oh, I remember those days. One of those fights was definitely with me. But 
You know, kids. You're fighting one minute and your friends the next. Eventually, she found a way to rein in that desire to fight. And now she's who people call to resolve conflicts. She's known as the Peacemaker. It sounds like she still argues with Koichi, though. Don't siblings usually stop fighting when they get older? <sighs> That's partly my fault. Koichi asked me to stop <laughs> Chaska from doing anything dangerous, but you probably know by now, once Chaska makes up her mind, there's no changing it. Oh, I get it. No wonder you tried to talk us out of going to the Night Kingdom. Chaska even said that wasn't like you. I'm all for your adventure. You need to take risks when you're young, because by the time you're my age, you couldn't attempt something like that even if you wanted to. Better try now than live with regrets later. That's what I say. Still, I can understand where Kuichi's coming from. In the end, nobody wants to sit back and let a loved one put their life on the line. <laughs> All right, it's just the two of us now. You have one minute to explain yourself. I don't have anything to say. You don't have to approve, but you should know I only do what's necessary. That attitude is exactly the problem. It's like you don't care. You try to sneak off to the Night Kingdom behind my back and then play it down as if it's just a trip abroad. <laughs> well, <laughs> technically I am going abroad. <laughs> Again with the excuses! <laughs> we agreed, didn't we? There are four levels of danger. If it's not something urgent, you can only engage in level two danger and below. You can only go up to level three if a situation is so dire there's absolutely no alternative. I'd say this is a level three. Trip to the Night Kingdom? If that's not a level four, I don't know what is. <laughs> and you were just going to sneak into the place without saying anything. What do you mean, sneak into the place? I always planned on walking in there with my head held high. <laughs> you bought off Uncle Wyna, didn't you? He promised me he'd stop you from doing anything dangerous. Oh, it's like he didn't even try. <laughs> you feel like he went back on his word. What if I told you my mind was made up and there was nothing he could have done? Not even by force. Oh, I knew it. So he did try to say something, but you didn't listen. But this is important. If you were in my shoes, you'd make the same decision. You don't know that. I'm a doctor, and I handle logistics. If you're going to waltz into a dangerous situation where you could lose control at any moment, it's my duty to say something. All right, whatever. Anything else? <sighs> you... What do you mean, anything else? <laughs> Why don't you reflect on what you've done and promise me you'll stay put? Time out. Is this one of our normal arguments or a serious one? <laughs> Chaska, Are we just role playing? Like I'm joking. Then you need to know something. What happened to Kachina was partially my fault. I can't leave her there to die. That's not who I am. <laughs> Why am I queasy? The person you become when you lose control—that's also not who you are. That's a different issue. You said it yourself. A person is only as good as their morals. If I want to live in that land. I need to display qualities that make me worthy of this nation. I've also told you that managing your condition is equally important. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. <sighs> All right, let's stop this here. If we keep going, I might actually have to get serious. And I think Wyna prefers his roof attached to his house. <laughs> is that a threat? That sounds like a threat to me. Uh, Koichi! <sighs> Younger sisters are supposed to listen to their elders. Uh, so, you're really going to go, no matter what I say? I'm supposed to be your sister. Then support me. I'll be back. All you have to do is wait. Uh, Chaska. So, that's it. Why'd you have to turn out to be so darn annoying? <laughs> that ass. <sighs> you two are something else. Something yeah, you she's adopted. To say? 
I know you aren't related by blood, but you two sure are similar. Really? You know, I said that very thing to Kuichi not too long ago, and she reacted the exact same way, down to the very tone of voice. <laughs> it's not my place to get involved, but I will say this. Try to spend a little more time with your sister. You're tough kids. That doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Thank you. Anytime. All right. If you're done with the spirit speaker stone, you might as well hand it over. Uh... According to Kinich, it's an important ceremonial artifact, so it'd be safer to keep it with me. Um, about that. <sighs> if only Tone Gift 5 was here, you could have <laughs> repaired it just like the Holy Liar. Lots of pullbacks to the Munchdak quest. It might be in a few more pieces than you remember. In this Aqua quest. Uh huh? You explain the sequence of events to Wyna. <laughs> I see. Mm. Sounds like it was an urgent situation. If someone's life was on the line, then you had no choice. Still, Seat Lolly's going to be a nightmare to deal with <laughs> now that you've broken her stuff. I'll explain everything to her later. Stay safe out there in the Night Kingdom, okay? I'll wait here for your safe return. Hi there, what can I help you with? Or is there anything you wanted to help the signs of the canopy with? Um, hello. What did you mean when you said help? <sighs> Let me explain. Often, members of the tribe just have too much on their hands, so some turn into commissions that are open to outsiders as well. <laughs> okay, chill. Anyone who wants to take on a commission can just come here, to the Obsidian Totem Pole. Naturally, you'll be compensated for collect completing commissions. Feel free to stop by and help. Uh, and you are... I'm a vet who specializes in treating Saurians. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it may sound cool, but I really just give baby Saurians their meds and talk to them. At most, I could be considered a medical intern. For seriously injured Saurians, it's best if you see a professional Sauro vet. Like Aoife from the Flower Feather Clan. If you give him a call, he'll rush right on over. Of course, I've got some pretty neat talents too. You know how Yumkasaurs usually don't like being around people? Well, they don't mind me. Sometimes just spending time with them is a kind of healing. A worn out Yumkasaur. They don't look like they're in the mood to talk. It's a good thing they can't talk even if they were in the mood. Oh! We do get- Okay! Ugh, what I've done lately is listening to those humans go on and on. Sorry, I'm not in the mood for a chat. Don't think I'll be in the mood tomorrow either. <laughs> That's so cool! We get to like understand the Saurians. What happened at the stadium? Well, it's fairly complicated. <laughs> Let me give you the condensed version. You learn the Pyrocon's battle, battle against the captain as well as the sacrifice. Is it Fatui again? We can't go anywhere without them causing trouble. But what if the Fatui finds out you've lost your power? Won't they try to take advantage of the situation? <laughs> That's why it has to be our little secret. No one else can know or we're asking for trouble. I'll make you my dirty little secret. Little secret. <laughs> Look, I wish I could offer you some sort of consolation, but I won't lie to you. With multiple factions closing in, there's nothing comforting about the situation we're facing. Still, all you need to do is focus on your goal. You can leave the complicated matters to me. I can also step in on the Pyro Archon's behalf. There's a limit to what I can accomplish, but I'll help you however I can. <laughs> There's no need to be so modest, Yansan. Your incredible Yansan. strength has long been a well-known fact. You're the pride of your tribe. Archon, I... I'm sorry about before. You have so much on your plate. So much that you have to worry about. But all I could do was focus on my own feelings. You have nothing to be sorry about. We all get overwhelmed by our emotions, myself included. Your reaction to Kachina's disappearance, I... I understand that feeling very well. Well, now that we have Kachina's ancient name, let's go track her down. Follow me. Your thoughts on human archons? I think it's an interesting choice. I'm curious what that means for Archonhood. 
and the nature of the throne in general. And whether that makes her a true archon or just like a figurehead. Like an archon to the people, what but not an archon place? in reality, you know? I don't know. Hey, isn't that a Taya's talisman? Like a Farina? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> Good eye. This is where I store all the various mementos I've collected. Wow. Oh, she's autistic. I've never seen this place before. <laughs> There's so many things in here. It looks like there are items from every tribe. Collecting them must have taken a lot of effort. I suppose you could think of it as a hobby of sorts. In Natlan, everyone grows up listening to the stories of heroes. And physical items do a far better job of preserving those stories than our own memory. But it seems like the thing with Mavlika is that winners of the pilgrimage of the return of the sacred flame, some of those winners then go on to be the Pyro Archon and I guess inherit powers of that throne. Which is interesting. Like, they're not inherently gods by nature. They are humans who then take on the power of gods. Which I suppose that's kind of similar to how vision wielders are, right? They're taking on the power of gods, or rather the power of dragons. And the gods got their power from the dragons, so yeah. Now, I still have some preparations to make for the ceremony, so feel free to take a look around in the meantime. If you're curious about an item, I'm more than willing to tell you about its origins. All right, we'll have a look. Make sure to handle everything with care. This cup, for example, it's heavier than it looks. I wonder if it just means they can access the Gnosis power, like that's literally all they need to be the Archon. Yeah, I guess so. But then what was the purpose of them all being gods? Like, what was the purpose of the Archon War? Whoa, that belt is bigger than Paimon's head! A lot of things are bigger than your head. <laughs> The Collective of Plenty are known for their bodybuilding competitions and contests of strength. This belt is a symbol of great honor within the tribe. The association with strength might also have been the reason the original belt was extremely heavy. It was difficult for even two people to lift. And even if a warrior had the strength to put it on, wearing it for any length of time would still leave them gasping for breath. Sounds like it. So the owner of the original belt, Katera, commissioned a craftsman to make a copy identical in appearance but far lighter in weight. That is the belt you see before you. He would often wear this version when training in order to protect his waist. Or he made a lighter version so he could wear it all the time and show <laughs> it off. I think the Arkham War had a similar purpose to the pilgrimage, collecting power to refuel the heavenly principles. Ooh. That's a really interesting thought, actually. There are so many jars and potions around here. Do they have anything to do with alchemy? No, those belong to the masters of the Nightwind. Their ceremonial tools used to amplify the ability to communicate with the Night Kingdom and the Wyab. Yamaya is an expert in this field, and she taught me a lot. Even though she appears stoic and serious, she actually has a keen sense of humor. The tools you Jason, see this is your are moment. quite traditional. Her students found them outdated, so she passed them on to me. The contents of the jars aren't all that special. Oh, uh, except the big jar in the middle. That's what she really wanted to give me. Ooh, must be something really <laughs> cool. What's inside? Grape juice. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite tasty, although probably expired by now. You didn't drink it? <laughs> This flower looks like it's thriving. You must be good at taking care of plants, Archon. Interesting, they they all call her Archon, the god of respect. Like, she- that's also- that's a good point. The other Archons have, like, their Archon name that they're known as by the people, right? So Lady Farina was her chosen name and, like, her kind of title name. Whereas, like, you know, Nahida has Nahida as a chosen name, but then her sort of title as the Dendro Archon is Lesser Lord Kusanali. Um, but then her demon name is Bua. So all most of the Archons have three names, right? Um, they're like Civi name, like civilian name, their sort of official title as a figurehead, and then they have their demon name. So we've got like Morax, 
is the demon name, Zhongli is the Sivi name, and then Rex Lapis is the title name. And then we've got Venti, Barbatos. Actually, does he? I don't think he has a a title name. He's just Barbatos. Oh, Tone Deaf Bard, yeah. Um, obviously, Raiden has like A, and then a Raiden Shogun, and then she has um, Beezabal. Mavlika seems to be her chosen name. We don't know her demon name yet. I wonder if like the thing with with the names, like Ash was saying, like the names are like roles. So I wonder if the demon names get passed down. So like the Pyroarchons all inherit the same demon name. I wonder. Although I guess I guess Makoto and A had different demon names, but that's because they they had different roles. They had different worldviews and different ways of governing. Um, and we still don't know what Ruka Devata's demon name was, whether it was also Bua. So I wonder if Egeria's demon name was also Fosalor. Or was Fosalor just the name of the Oceanid and it's not actually a demon name? Yeah, it's interesting. So they call her Archon because that's the only other like term of respect they have because they wouldn't call her her chosen name because that's like too familiar. Existed out. Oh. Hey, there's a fishing rod here. It must have belonged to the people of the springs. That's right. It belongs to a legendary fisherman named Matavaru. I have his entire set of fishing equipment actually. He and I met in a tavern. He told me about a particular kind of giant fish and his meticulous plan to catch it. In his eyes, I saw a hunger and a strong fighting spirit. To him, the sea was the battlefield upon which he staked his honor. So, did he do it? The next time I saw him, he was covered in scars. It turned out the fish he sought had been corroded by the abyss. Oh, he shit. He managed to kill the fish, but sustained a serious injury in the process, which meant he could never go deep sea fishing again. Can a fisherman claim victory if he fails to bring back his catch? That's what he asked me in the end. Well, Paimon thinks he won. That was my answer as well. The experience was far more valuable than the prize itself. And he lost so in much the in the process. End, he didn't because want of the his tools to go to waste, so he gave them to me. Wait, that means you also know how to fish. <laughs> Maybe we can go head to head sometime. I want to know which tribe Mavlika is from. This is a Teus talisman. I'm sure you're familiar with this one already. Atea was rarely ever without it. The talisman brought her a lot of luck in battle. The powder still needs some time to settle. That so design looks like her longer. eyes. Well, what do you think of my collection? Do you feel like you have a better understanding of Natland's culture now? Yeah! If each item represents a different story, seems oh, this like Natland's really been through a lot. Does every item hold a special memory, just like Atea's talisman? That's right. The items in my collection actually serve a similar purpose to the ancient names passed down among the tribes. Hmm. They demonstrate the true shape of time. The oh. shape of time? Most people perceive time as a linear concept, almost like a straight line that can only move forward. We cannot change the past or predict the future. Is this them but expanding on block time? There's also a different theory, one that I believe to be closer block to the time. Truth. Namely, that the past, present, and future all exist at once. At once? Paimon's not sure she understands. Uh... Let's say your journey ended right now. Thinking back on your experience in each nation, which one would you say was the most important? I'd have to say all of them. 
Exactly. Even at the end of your journey, the things you experienced along the way don't cease to exist. They become part of who you are. Interesting way to explain Take block time. Take out a portion of that journey, and you would likely make very different decisions, and eventually arrive at a very different destination. The future is the same way. It exists even though it has yet to come to pass. We just lack the means to perceive it. Because everything that you've done of up until that point informs the future. Those with the power to foresee the future, they simply call it by a different name. Fate. <laughs> You're quite familiar with that concept, I would imagine. Uh, that does kind of make sense. The future hasn't happened, but already exists. Humanity excels at living in the present, but too often we forget the past and neglect the future. So ancient names record the past. While the pilgrimage and the night warden wars lead us to a better future. Only by uniting the people of Natlan across countless eras can we fight back against an enemy as formidable as the Abyss. To come up with such a set of rules, the first Pyro Archon must have possessed a level of insight I can only imagine. Oh yes, please tell us about the original Pyro Archon. So the first Pyro Archon created the rules of Natlan? That's correct. At first, he was a mortal man with no special power. After he ascended to the Divine Throne, he used it to borrow power from the heavens and establish the rules of Natlan. Renova? I have never seen that name in the lore before. Normally the heavens refer to Celestia. Where the fuck is this word coming from? Brain explode. Namely, a framework through which ordinary people can ascend to Archonhood. Interesting. By holding the pilgrimage, we're able to determine the strongest among us. And when that person ascends oh, to the divine it, yeah. throne, their inner flame will awaken. In addition, the sacred flame will grant them significant knowledge and memory of this land, after all, that's how I came to know everything I just told you. It just reminds me of Hershes because in Honkai, oftentimes, uh, the Hershes have like, there's either like they're born with it or like they, they have a Hershey core, but they're not necessarily the Hershey until something drives them to the brink where they tap into that power and then become the Hershey. And they start off as ordinary humans, generally. Ordinary humans who uh, have naturally like better resistance to the Honkai. The one character that we know for a fact ascend, like the one normal human who was, we know who ascended to Celestia is Vanessa and she was from Natlan. So I wonder if, if part of the reason why she was able to ascend to Celestia is because she was from Natlan originally. So it all comes down to the power of the divine throne and the rules. Wait, is that a family portrait? <laughs> yes. That's my mother, father, younger sister, and the little Saurians we raised. I turned a piece of my dad's leather armor into a canvas and commissioned a famous artist to paint our likeness. Your sister is so cute! It looks like the two of you are really close. Why do I feel like they're all dead? I'm always having a hard time thinking of an Archon as an ordinary person, but seeing this portrait... It kind of makes sense now. It really doesn't look like there was anything special about you before. Oh, wait, is Paimon allowed to say that? <laughs> a little late for that question, don't you think? Sorry, Paimon's so sorry. Paimon's mouth works faster than her brain sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I'd never get upset over something like that. No matter what others may say, my past is a precious part of my identity. I'm forever proud of the life I used to lead. Becoming the Archon doesn't mean you sever ties with your family. The position just comes with a lot of responsibilities, so it impacts how often you get to see them. My father made the most delicious stew, so my sister would often bring me a large pot of his cooking, and he would sit on a blanket and eat it together. One time, we didn't close the door securely, and the Saurians you were raising ran into the room and knocked over the entire pot. <laughs> My sister immediately burst into tears. The two troublemakers were going for the meat, but when they saw my sister's distress, they froze on the spot. 
I still remember the way they laid there, sulking like a pair of children, Aww. even after making such a mess. It was frustrating, but in the end, all I could do was comfort my sister and move on. Wow. You forgave them just like that? Isn't that what being a family is all about? <laughs> I think about that story a lot, actually. As the Archon, I made a vow to defend this nation, and experiences like that, they remind me exactly what I'm trying to protect. Well, what happened after that? This portrait looks pretty old. Your sister must be all grown up by now, right? I bet she's dead. I believe she ended up working as an architect and artist. You believe? She built many houses and crafted many beautiful works of art. Anyway, that's enough about me. Now that the mm. powder is settled, we can begin. Iansan, Mulani, Chaska, over here, please. Place the ancient name up there, and then we'll begin. Oh, you missed it. Do I not get another chance to interact with it? Explains the story of the guy that owned it. Ugh. I didn't see it before when I went to talk to her. Oh, they all turn as you go. Place ancient name. Is this Vicky Mount you can interact with? Oh. Surely, as the echoes of life resound through heaven and earth, so too shall our stories remain eternal. Ancient name, take us to your fated bearer. Allow her to answer our call. Cutie. Uh, am I hallucinating again? Kachina, are you okay? Huh? I, I'm not seeing things, am I? Is, is the abyss playing tricks on me again? It's okay, Kachina. It's just us. We're trying to find a way to bring you back. Everyone, you have to listen to me. I've been investigating the Night Kingdom this entire time. And I figured out what's wrong. The Wyab is being affected by the Abyss. I was waiting for the Wyab to send me back, but then this really strong monster came in and almost killed me. The Wyab saved me, even though its power is weakening. So I've been hiding from the monsters while trying to find a way to help. The Night Kingdom has become a huge mess Oh, I keep hearing these awful sounds and seeing really horrible things. Don't listen to those sounds, Kachina. The Abyss is trying to strip you of your sanity. All you need to do is stay safe and wait for us. We'll be there shortly. It's okay. I feel so much better now that I've had the chance to talk to you guys. You don't need to worry about me. I've never been strong or special at all, really. So I don't blame anyone for forgetting about me and leaving me behind. <laughs> Just knowing you care is more than enough. Kachina! I'll find a way back. You don't have to put yourselves in danger to come rescue me. You're always like this, Kachina. Now's not the time to act tough. I love her. We're coming for you, and that's final. I don't know what lies the Abyss has been feeding you, but I'll tell you something right now. Nobody here sees you as a burden. You're a victor of the Night Warden Wars, a hero of Natlan. All you need to do is wait for us to rescue you, and you'll get all the applause and recognition you deserve. Baby. Still, I don't want you to put yourselves in danger because of me. I don't want to hold anyone back ever again. 
All you need to do is place your trust in us, just like you always have. No one fights alone. We're not leaving you behind. Not ever. Yeah, we're so close, we can't call it quits now. Be careful. Oh, she's fading. Be careful. Looks like we've lost contact. Now comes the most dangerous part. You have to traverse the Night Kingdom I'm in hype. physical form. This entrance to the Night Kingdom was left behind after an abyssal invasion. Even a brief amount of time inside could expose you to corrosion. I know. I'm prepared for that possibility. All right. Then I wish you all the best. I'll tell Koichi to be ready just in case. She's very experienced in dealing with abyssal corruption. That face you just made. Don't tell me you two got into another <laughs> argument. No, I just feel bad for creating more work for her. I'll go with them too, Archon. The more people, the stronger the party. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. It really means a lot that you're willing to brave these dangers with me. And there's no time to lose, so let's get going. Now that I've lost my power, I won't be able to provide much practical support. But I can still keep an eye on the situation from here. Eonsan, I know it's unlikely, but if you encounter a situation you can't handle... That won't happen. I hope not. Be careful out there. I'll observe the situation from here. <laughs>